Good Welcome to the Larry Crider Leadership Podcast. Larry Crider here. And with me is the brand new international director of Dove International, Merle Shea. Yeah. We are, as you can tell, we are live. We are in Sandy Cove, Maryland. And uh, we are at our international leadership conference in Atlanta just two days ago. We had the, the leadership transfer. And we've had an awesome week here together. And we have with us today, in fact, Merle, Merle and I are going to handle this together. We're going to ask you hard questions. <laughs> and we are here with Steve Backlund. Steve from Northern California, you have blessed us so much. Thank you for being on the podcast. Ah, so, so glad to be with you. You're great. Right. Well, you, you've written all these books, you know, and, uh, you, you, and you're a leader to leaders to leaders, and we're so honored and blessed that you're here. And, but we would like to focus in a bit on this podcast on the culture of empowerment, one of the books you and I think your brother had worked on together, and we'd like to talk to you about that. First of all, we're going to start with a quote, and Merle, you've got that quote. Right, sure. Here we go. Um, every organization has some kind of culture. A wise leader shapes culture intentionally and chooses a model where empowerment is the norm. So that was in your book. And so, so we want we want to yeah, hear about we that. Want, we're you wrote jump that. right into that. I wrote that? Yeah. yeah, you, <laughs> yeah you did, yeah. I think one one of the things that you mentioned is that the same environment that raised up Peter, James, and John also raised up Judas. Talk to us about that. Yeah. Yeah, it's so powerful that, uh, I mean, my senior pastor, Bill Johnson, he said my goal is not to build a big church, but to build big people. And, and that's changed my life. And I, even before I heard that, the Lord had kind of put that in my heart. And yeah, the, the, Jesus, the same culture that created 11 world changers also created a Judas. So if our, our, our goal is to prevent a Judas, we'll never have 11 world changers. Mm, that's good. So if our goal is just to prevent uh, bad things from happening under our leadership, then we're not going to have the uh, culture to raise up world changers. Mm -hmm. And so it's a, it's a culture of understanding what is the purpose of leadership. The, the purpose of leadership is not just to create slaves to accomplish right. the leader's vision. Right. And certainly there needs to be a loyalty and a commitment to the leader and an embracing of, of the same core values, and that's key. But mm -hmm. the purpose of, the main purpose of a leader, and we heard it even today, is, is to equip the saints right. for the work of the ministry. It's to give people tools to change the world and so we, we realize that uh, the people around us, are, are they've got gold in them. Right. right. And once we believe that, and we know as a leader that one of our main assignments is to see what that gold is and help them uh, believe in it themselves and right. change the world with it, then that changes our focus. Yeah. Take a few minutes and tell us how you learned all this. I mean, just tell a little bit about you and how you learned a lot of these things about empowerment. Well, I learned uh, with my wife a lot. Because <laughs> my wife is very different than me, and I tried to use my own motivational techniques on her. <laughs> did it work? No, it did not work. And I remember I made her cry one more time. Because <laughs> no. I was just trying to guilt her into doing the right thing, wow. what I thought was the right thing. Sure. Wow. Sure. And, and, and so the Lord said, really, he says, I'm going to change your heart towards her. I want you to see the gold in her. I want you to love her unconditionally. And I want you to see her as I see her. And I didn't do it perfectly, but I had a heart change. Wow. Sure. And so my heart change of understanding her and that she's not wired like me and what are her giftings and to become the biggest encourager in her life. And she's one of the most changed people I know. Wow. wow. And then my first church I pastored, I, I realized that uh, my beliefs about them were, were the problem. I, I remember kind of complaining to the Lord about my people. And he said, Steve, do you know what your people's biggest problem is? <laughs> no, Lord, what's my people's biggest problem? He said, it's you. <laughs> yeah. wow. Because they have enough issues in their life, let alone having a leader who does not believe in them who sees them according to their past experience. Uh, and so the people that the Lord brought to me 
uh, were, yeah, my, my training ground and also my learning how to empower myself mm, because right. that's, mm. all of that right. led into uh, a leadership style of, of the culture of empowerment. Yeah, so, so you use the word empowerment. Talk about what that really is from your perspective. Um, it means give power away. Yeah. You, you, you give power okay. to people to impact uh, what you're doing. For instance, uh, I want to empower my people to influence me, mm. my leadership team. I want to be influenceable. Okay. Mm. Team, we build team, and, uh, and I, it, I don't just want to be a team leader who decides and announces to the team. I want the key people on my team, because you know, you think about the five-fold ministry, there's different perspectives. There's mm. different gift mixes. I, I have my own perspective, but I need other people to influence me. So it's giving power away. It's giving opportunity. Uh, it, it, it's uh, helping people believe they're significant. Uh, when Bill Johnson, he went to a little town called Weaverville, California uh, in the 70s, it was his first pastorate. And one of his goals was to convince those people they were significant. Wow. Just, just that was his goal as leadership. Yeah. And by the, he was there 17 years. And the church, it was a small town, so the church was about 250, 275. The last year he was there, 160 of those people went to another, world, another nation, another wow. nation wow. On, to minister. Wow. And so they got it. They, they were, were empowered. So they, they thought they could do it. That's incredible. Um, so you talk a lot in your book specifically, and, and I have to say, I love this book, Culture of Empowerment. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, we've we've taken some of our teams through it. It's shaped some, some of the way. It, it's it put kind of put language to what we already feel and what yeah. we like know is right in terms of mm -hmm. empowering people mm -hmm. around us. Um, uh, you you talk a lot about like. <laughs> not just giving that power away, but, but helping people believe in themselves and being super uh, supportive of them and investing in them. And I wanna, I wanna ask a question about holding, like in an environment where you are their biggest cheerleader, but yet you have to hold them accountable. How do you do that? That's how, do, how do you, you know, like in the same way of, of empowering and Great saying question. yes, like you can do this, you know, you, you have it in you, uh, yeah. you know, how, how then do you also hold accountability to standards so you have a, like a spirit of excellence? But yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> and I so, about yeah, that. The, yeah, the first, when we were pastoring near Las Vegas, Nevada, there was a gold mine there and they moved hundreds of tons of dirt a day, but nobody ever talked about gold, mm. uh, dirt, excuse me. They only talked about gold. Right. Yeah. And people won't mind you moving their dirt as long as they know you believe there's gold in them and you're mm. looking for gold. That is good. Leadership is not just dirt removal. Yeah, I'm going to make you a good Christian. Get rid of this dirt. <laughs> Stop doing that. Yeah, come on. Uh, and again, that's more guilt focused. And sure. um, okay. empowerment creates a, a culture of feedback. Mm. And talk about that. A what? culture of feedback is where we as a leader are willing to get feedback ourselves. We need to be accountable. Yeah. We need to model that we're not a loose cannon, that we're not a lone ranger. Okay. We're not, it's just, I just hear from God, you know, mm. that it's where we are. And, and even uh, getting feedback from our team. How are you experiencing me? Yeah. Right. yeah. And, and, and is there anything that I am doing? That, that is causing mistrust or whatever. And so as we set the standard, then we, we talk about feedback. Mm. And we talk about, we, we are gonna help each other go higher. It's not just an accountability to stop wrong. Mm. But it, it's like, hey, we're a prophetic culture. We see you prophetically, we encourage you. But we're also gonna tell you there's certain things you can't take with you where you're going. Oh, yeah. I love that phrase. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you yeah. can't take that with you. You can't, yeah. you're always being late for, you can't take that with you. Right. You, you're just uh, getting offended all the time. You know, you can't, you're going somewhere. Come on. Yeah, yeah that's so good. That's so good. Yeah. Steve, in this room this week, here at our conference, we've had uh, probably 19 nations represented. Yeah. How does empowerment work when you're working cross-culturally? Talk about that. Well, 
One of the, the core values that we have is that, that I, fe I seek first to understand before I seek to be understood. That's good. And, and good. that, whether cr cross-culturally, you know, different generations or, or whatever, uh, I want to seek to understand you. Mm. I want to ask great questions. I don't want to mm. come in mm. uh, as the you know, answer person. Yeah. Uh, I want to come in as the understanding person. Beautiful. Because cause trust, trust is the currency of influence. Mm. Wow. So uh, if people don't trust us, right. we can't empower. True. And so trust is something, even in a, you know, like a, a first couple years assignment uh, in a new thing, one of the most important things that's being built is trust. Mm -hmm. So that our, our influence can grow. So I think whether, you know, whatever, cross-culturally, people are a lot the same. That's they like true. to be seen, they like to be understood, they like to be appreciated, uh, and, and that we make it clear that, you know, especially as a leader, uh, my primary goal is not what you can do for the ministry. My primary goal is to help you succeed in life. Amen. That's well, good, yeah. That's You've written a book on this, obviously. We've talked about that. Talk to us a little bit about that. I want to make sure that everyone listening uh, to the podcast knows where they can get that. The Culture of Empowerment. Yeah, yeah all please. my books you can get on Amazon. Um, this book, The Culture of Empowerment, is also an audio book. Okay. Uh, audio, audible.com. And we, can, uh, we have a website, ignitinghope.com. We have on our ignitinghopeacademy.com, we have a, a, a course mm. on empowerment as well Great. with my brother Phil and so if anybody wants to go deeper in that we we have uh, podcast weekly podcast I think it's 12 weeks long okay yep okay for everyone listening online you, we, we've got show notes check out the show notes all yeah. this information is on the show notes yeah. uh, you also you have another version of the book too right like you have yeah. uh, one version that's kind of geared towards church or towards like personal development and then you have the organizational development uh, book, I believe. Yeah, yeah. it's. Uh, Talk to us about that. We've written another book uh, called "The Culture of Empowerment for Businesses and Organizations," mm. and we 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 took the Christianese out of it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with the same uh, principles. Kind of does what John Maxwell does, you know. Great yeah, right. Uh, right. foundations there. So that's for like business owners, or maybe we're we're leading people who aren't even Christians, and we want to get that culture in there. That's a great book. And many people who follow, you know, our podcast, because the leadership podcast, they are leaders, they're leading meetings, you know, from yeah. different parts of the world. Let's talk about how to lead meetings in a way that empowers people. Yeah, that's, um, that's such a great question. And the leading meetings, first of all, the more proactive you are, uh, is the more creative you're going to be in leading a meeting, whether it's a one-on-one -on -one meeting, a team meeting, <clears throat> maybe a church service meeting, or whatever. And so I'm always looking, how can I activate people? Mm. How can I use people? Like we have, a, we have a team meeting for our staff and our interns pretty much every week, and we have someone <clears throat> give an opening, someone gives an opener, we have somebody, we have like three people designated, you're giving testimonies, uh, we have, we read a book, we, we read books together, and so they'll say, we'll just take a few minutes, hey, what's the one uh, line out of this chapter that spoke to you the most this week? So they're contributing. We have somebody, we, at the end of the meeting, we have somebody evaluate the meeting and say, here's two good things I liked about the meeting, here's one thing I think we can improve mm -hmm. to do the meeting even better. So we're, we're trying to model uh, the culture of feedback. So yeah, definitely we want to train people. Usually when I travel, I have team members with me and I give them some time at the end to, you know, just release prophetic words or encouragement. And so I'm always looking for opportunities of how can I use people. And then very often in those meetings, we'll give feedback in the meeting. Hey, what you just said was so good. Here's an idea of how even to take it higher. Good. In that, Good. so there's a lot of interaction. Mm -hmm. That's Good. awesome. Yeah. That's ahead. awesome. Um, you talked about, uh, in one of the previous sessions here. You talked about not being a victim of the people that you lead. Mm. And there's a <clears throat> quote that you said. It said, "If we look to those we lead to meet our needs, we ask them to empower us <laughs> instead of the other way around." Talk about that. Can you unpack that a little bit? 
Yeah, I mean, the, the nature of most relationships is, is excitement when we first meet, then disappointment, mm. and then either disconnection or connection. Mm. Wow, that's good. Say that again. The nature of most relationships, I mean, it happened in my marriage, excitement, <laughs> <laughs> disappointment, and Wendy would say the same thing. Steve, you disappoint me. Yeah. <laughs> And then either disconnection or connection. Mm. So, you know, just um, the leading people, being a victim of your people, is the, um, is I, I intentionally say, I choose you again. Mm. I choose you again. Because the, the disappointment is um, the tendency to allow people's behavior or hearsay information about people to cause us to um, withdraw our heart from people, that's a tendency we can't take with us where we're going. Mm -hmm. And that's a tendency of leader. I get disappointed, then I withdraw my heart. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and and that, that thing is really hinders empowerment because who I believe I'm talking to, whether it's my wife, my children, a congregation, who I believe I'm talking to, how great I believe they are, is going to determine the level of empowerment in my words. Because mm -hmm. out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So being a victim of my people, it, that's just, um, that, that belief system is going to create a lot of lapse in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I remember just uh, in my life, like trying to get people to tell me to do what I think we should do anyway, like trying to get them to empower me, right? Like trying, yes. you know, and there's, there's a portion that you, you want to get buy in, but then sometimes we can step into that side where we're actually looking for them. It, it's almost yeah. like I, I get something from your agreement from me, or, or mm -hmm. I don't know if that's the right way to say that, but like, you know, I, I, I'm empowered by you in that sense. So talk a, a little bit more about that with, you know, how do we avoid that? Because that borders on insecurity, right. where yeah. I'm looking every, you know, looking to everybody else. How do we be confident in our leadership to not fall into insecurity, but still Im invite an, an empowerment uh, situation where people can influence? Yeah, that's because we need to lead. We definitely be, need to be the leader. Right. And, and be confident in, in our, our leadership. I mean, there, there's the, the two extremes are that, number one the extreme is we're so insecure that we're, we're a people pleaser and, and we're not gonna do anything unless, you know, that's the pastoral mindset. The pastoral mindset is always concerned about making sure everybody's happy. If anybody's unhappy, that is a bad thing. Well, that's just, if we lead that way, then we're just, we're not going to do anything. The other, the other extreme is, I don't care what anybody thinks at all. I'm the leader. Right, right, right. And, and, and so it's, it's somewhere in between. And we, I think having self-awareness, what side of that do we fall on? Mm, yeah. Uh, and, yeah, I'm not going to let anybody speak into my life. Uh, but I, I do want key people to be around me. But there's always times in leadership where we've got to make a decision that's unpopular. In light of that, then, talk to us about how do we empower others that we're leading through managing conflict effectively? I think um, we training our people to manage conflict. Okay. Uh, I, I believe, you know, some of the things when we say, when it says to equip the saints, I think sometimes we think too narrow. Mm. The, w when I was pastoring, I would have every year I would have a marriage uh, emphasis, a parenting emphasis, a financial emphasis, and a communication and conflict emphasis. You know, and because those are some of the most felt needs that we have. And so training people, talking about it a lot. Hey, conflict is normal. You know, uh, you, 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 if you're a monk in a cave burning incense and you're by yourself your whole life, you can look spiritual and not have to grow up. <laughs> but it, it, we're, grow, we, we're growing up so talk about it. this is normal you, you're, you, you're going to disagree with the decision I made that's normal right. yeah but here's how to handle that you don't like what somebody else is doing in the church yep that's normal 
and, and give biblical ways to um, proactively. So that doesn't mean you're, you're not going to have to deal with things that are going to pop up, but it's right. going to decrease the likelihood of things. And it's also going to create a culture. This is how we do things. We, we don't talk to somebody else. If we have a problem about it, we go directly mm -hmm. to them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But sometimes leaders, uh, because we don't create a culture of feedback, uh, people don't have any option, they feel, mm -hmm. except to gossip. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so I think just, just telling people, hey, if you have a problem with what I'm doing or, you know, whatever, okay, you know, here's what you do. First, pray about it. You know, I, we need to give some strategies to people rather than just assume they're going to know because, you know, families are dysfunctional, you know, leader, we're, and so we have to help people. Right, right. Great. Well, we're soon out of time, believe it or not. Merle, pick out your toughest question for this man. <laughs> <laughs> toughest question. Let's talk about the Carnegie test. Ha. Yeah. Oh. Do you remember the Carnegie test? I do. It's in, it's in chapter one. Yeah. Yeah, Dale Carnegie. Yeah. Talk to us about the, the yeah. Carnegie Great, test. Great uh, yeah. business owner. I think a steel industry. I mean, just made a fortune out of that. <clears throat> and he, um, his way of understanding who he was going to promote was he would send a manager, they would go on vacation for two weeks, and then he would watch how his or her or his department functioned. And if it functioned well, that man was promoted. If it didn't function well, he was fired. Wow. Wow. And so really, you know, leadership, leadership is I, I want to have a work myself out of a job mentality. That, that, that I want to, I, I don't want to just be the person who's just always needed. I want to pass on what I know. I want to have assistance. I want to train people uh, in what I know so that when I leave, everything runs smoothly. That's, you know, that's, as a, as a leader, that's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I don't need to be in every meeting. Right. Yeah. Woo-hoo. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Challenging people. Oh, talk, about, yeah. <laughs> talk about empowering ways to work with challenging people. Well, first of all, do you have any challenging people in your life? Oh man, yeah, I, I, I have. I remember one guy when we were one of the churches we pastored. We forbid him from coming to church. <laughs> he was so challenging. He was challenging. <laughs> we say you you are toxic. But even in that, we I didn't I didn't use anger as right. my motivation. Uh, you, we don't, yeah. some dysfunction, dysfunctional leadership is when we only use anger mm, that's true. to deal with things. Yeah. No, it's like, here's a boundary. Here's, if you want to come back, here's a pathway, but we're not allowing you here. Mm. So challenging people, um, first of all, we need a heart for people. Because mm. yeah. yeah. challenging people, the Lord loves them. Most right. people believe they're doing the right thing. So I want to I want to have a father mindset and not an elder brother mindset. The elder brother mindset first see what's wrong with a person or place. That's their default. The father mindset first sees what's right with a person or place. Mm. And so first of all, I, I want to make sure because elder brothers have a very difficult time with challenging people. Mm -hmm. mm. Fathers have an it doesn't mean they're always it's always going to work out, but they have a much more likely chance of success because they're seeing them from God's perspective. Good. I love how you say that because you're putting the own it like you provide there's always a path back. There's mm -hmm. always yeah. a pathway into, you know, like what you described in this scenario. They like hey, if you want to be here, this is how you be here. Yep. Right? And it's not just a cutting off and so the heart in that I love mm -hmm. that description where you're always providing a way for people to win. I, I told him, if you can convince one of my elders you're sincere, I'll talk to you again. Here, just got for some of us are writing that down. Yeah, that's, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's really good language because sometimes in leadership, we don't, we, we, I know for myself, we fail to have the right language yeah. to express uh, the father's heart to somebody because mm. you don't want to write them off and you can go into the one right. side of the ditch on the one side of the road that says we're just going to let anything fly yeah. mm. you know or the other side of the road where you just entirely cut them off and are harsh mm. and that's not God's heart either 
And so uh, providing the, and that's one thing that I love about this book is it helps to provide language for some of these scenarios right. and some of these things that we deal with as leaders. Right. It's so good. Right. And, and closing out here, you talk a lot about belief systems and you know yeah. that has been one of the strengths of your life and your teaching. Talk a bit more about that, our belief system, and how that applies to empowering leaders. Well, first of all, uh, our, our people, one of the greatest things leaders do is believe in their people. Right. And tell them, man, I'm so, um, you're like in a pastor, I am so excited I get to pastor you guys. Yep. Man, I, so cool. I mean, you, I am blessed. I love you. Mm. You know, just, uh, and, and we're going to change the world. Amen. Yeah, and, and being more leadership training focused, because once you, you, you get that uh, in you, then you become more leadership training focused mm -hmm. than trying to fix people mm -hmm. focused. Right. And in leadership training, in my training of leaders and, and people, I'm more concerned about how they think than what they do. Okay, that's good. In my one-on-one -on -one meetings, I'm more concerned about their belief systems mm -hmm. because we can't consistently do what we don't believe we are. And, and so discipleship, to me, is, was his mentoring and training people. So I'm focused on telling people much more who they are than telling them what they need to do. Doesn't mean I don't tell them what they need to do, but sure. it, I'm telling them who they are. Because if I'm only telling them what to do, then, then I'm probably more of a problem to them than a help. Well, you know, it's, we're going to close out our podcast uh, because of time, but we'd love, love to talk to you about, for about five hours on this. <laughs> it's so, so, so good. You have some books that would help people that are listening in the podcast. Again, everybody in the podcast, go to the show notes. There's a lot of information on there about Steve, his ministry, books. Mention a few of your books that you think. Yeah, I think uh, the book Fully Convinced, The Art of Decision Making, is yeah. one of my most powerful books. Uh, my wife has a book called Victorious Emotions, which is really, really strong. Um, we've got uh, the book Declarations, Unlocking Your Future. Uh, that is because it, if, if we aren't empowering ourselves, because if we're small on the inside, it's going to be hard to attract big people or build right. big people. That's good. So I, I, need to, I need to get big on the inside. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And because uh, if I, I'm insecure and, and I'm, you know, jealous and I'm, yeah, then I'm not going to, no matter how much I try, right. uh, it's going to work against me. So the, right. those books are, are key. Good. I would like you to take a moment yet and pray. <coughs> pray for us here in this room. Pray for all those listening around the world in the podcast that we'd become the empowering leaders God's called yep. us to be. Would you do that? I, I, I would love to. And thanks, Larry, thank for having me on here. And Yeah, Lord, thank you for um, that you've empowered us. Mm. You said, uh, be fruitful and multiply and subdue yeah. the earth. You said, go into all the world. You said, uh, you shall receive power yeah. so you can become my witnesses. You yeah. empower us. Right. Lord, we're, you trust us. Oh, my. <laughs> And, and Lord, we thank you for that. And we just uh, ask you that you would just do a powerful work in all of us and how we see the people we lead. Lord, um, give us uh, the tools uh, the, that we can actually cause them to become what they never thought they could become. Just as Jesus caused uh, uh, 11 people who were ordinary people as world changers Lord, we ask you that that would be on us. And that as David empowered the mighty men, uh, Lord, and, and caused them to become what they never thought they could become, Lord, we ask you for that David anointing to be on all of our lives and that we would cause uh, those in debt, distress, and discontent to become mighty men and mighty women doing great exploits who exceed us who become greater right. than us. That's, That's right. our desire, Lord. Right. In Jesus' In name, Jesus amen. Name. Amen. Thank you, Steve Backlund. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Merle Shank, for being my co-host today. Thank you, everybody here, and to everybody around the world listening to this podcast, Larry Credit Leadership Podcast. Again, check out the show notes. And just remember, one small change you make in your life that God leads you to make will make a massive difference in your life and the lives of others as we obey God together. God bless you. See you back here next week. Yeah.